Hello and welcome to the Sigma 2023 talk about Infinity Filter, expanding filters to infinity and beyond. I'm Neve and this is joint work with Ioana, Pedro and Rasmus. A filter is a compact probabilistic data structure that represents keys in a set and allows answering queries for whether a given key exists. It cannot return false negatives, but it does return false positives with a probability that depends on the amount of memory that it was assigned. Filters are typically used when we need to query for the existence of data entries that exist in storage. Employing a filter at a higher level of the, mem of the memory hierarchy, say SRAM or DRAM, allows queries to avoid searching the full data set in storage if the key doesn't exist. In this way, filters save uh, storage accesses and network hops, and thereby help to improve application performance at the, expense at the expense of a modest memory footprint. A filter is typically allocated with a given capacity, which dictates the maximum number of keys that can be inserted. As long as this capacity is not exceeded, the filter provides nice upper bound guarantees over the false positive rate and the overheads of insertions, queries, and deletes. In many modern applications, however, data grows dynamically. This begs the question of how to expand filters efficiently as the size of the data that they represent grows. The filter expansion problem is crucial across many areas of computer science, including computer architecture, networks, operating systems, and databases. One example of an application is in log-structured key-value stores, which buffer new data in memory, uh, flush it to an append-only log in storage, and index the location of each entry using a filter. As the data in storage grows, the filter must grow too to be able to map a greater number of entries in storage. In this application, being able to expand the filter efficiently is crucial for the key value store's overall performance. The traditional and most widely used kind of filter is the Bloom filter. It works by hashing each key to several random bits in a bitmap, setting them from zeros to ones. A query searches for the corresponding bits for a given key and returns a positive if they are all set to ones. It is widely known that Bloom filters cannot be efficiently expanded since they do not record which keys had set off which bits. So even if we expand a Bloom filter by doubling its capacity, we do, know how, we, we do not know how to map the bits set to ones from the original filter to the larger filter. Now, there are several workarounds to the filter expansion problem, but as we will see, they all have shortcomings. The first approach is that whenever a filter reaches capacity, we allocate a new filter with double the capacity of the last largest one. All insertions go into the largest filter, while queries now must traverse every filter along the chain for each query. The flaw is that this causes query costs to now increase logarithmically with respect to data size. Another workaround is to pre-allocate a very large filter in advance that could accommodate the maximum possible data size. However, this can waste a lot of memory. And besides, in most applications, the maximum data size is not actually known in advance. The final workaround is to scan the original data and reconstruct the brand new filter with greater capacity. However, this can be very expensive if the data resides in storage or over a network. Recently, a new class of filters emerged, which we coined fingerprint filters. They involve generating a hash for each key and partitioning it, partitioning it into two parts, the bucket address and the fingerprint. They then insert the fingerprint into a given bucket address in a hash table. A query for a given key checks the corresponding bucket and fingerprint. If there is a match, it returns a positive. In this construction, the false positive rate is proportional to 2 to the power of minus the fingerprint length, which we're going to abbreviate as f. At the same time, the number of buckets is equal to 2 to the power of the bucket address size. Various types of such filters have been proposed over the last decade, including cuckoo filter, XOR filter, and quotient filter. These designs differ mostly in terms of their hash collision resolution strategy. The good news is that such filters offer more promise with respect to efficient expansion. Specifically, with many of these filters, we can derive the original hash for each key by concatenating the fingerprint with the bucket address. We can then transfer the least significant bit from each fingerprint to become the most significant bit of the bucket address. And finally, insert the shortened fingerprint into the given longer bucket address in a new larger filter. The new filter has twice as many slots, each of which is narrower by one bit. As we lose one fingerprint bit each time we expand using this approach, we can express the false positive rate as 2 to the power of minus the original fingerprint length plus the number of expansions that have taken place so far, which is log of n. We can now simplify this to observe that the false positive rate with this approach grows linearly as a function of the data size. 
This is a uh, rapidly deteriorating false positive rate, and this is the first downside of the approach. The second downside is that this approach supports only up to f expansions, where f is the original fingerprint size, as at this point we run out of fingerprint bits. Now, it's technically possible to allocate more bits in advance, but this only delays the problem at the expense of additional memory, but does not fundamentally address the problem. So overall, there are four existing approaches for tackling the filter expansion problem today, and each one of them has a serious shortcoming. So our research challenge is therefore the following. How can we expand a filter infinitely many times without scanning the original data and while maintaining fast queries, insertions, and deletes, a modest memory footprint, and a stable false positive rate, all at the same time? To address this challenge, we designed InfiniFilter. InfiniFilter is also a hash table that stores a fingerprint for each key. The core innovation is a new entry format that allows storing different length fingerprints for different entries. InfiniFilter also expands by doubling its capacity and sacrificing a bit from each fingerprint to map that fingerprint to the expanded hash table. But newer entries inserted after expansion can still be set longer fingerprints due to the variable length entry format. This keeps the average fingerprint length, fingerprint length longer and thus the false positive rate more stable. More specifically, each hash slot is fixed length but consists of two variable length fields, a unary age counter and a fingerprint. The unary age counter counts how many expansions ago a given entry was inserted. A zero code means no expansions took place since the entry was inserted. A one zero code means the entry was inserted one expansion ago. 110 means the entry was inserted two expansions ago, and so on. The remaining bits in the slot are used as a fingerprint. Since the unary counter is delimited by zero, we can easily parse the contents of a bucket to infer how many bits belong to the counter and how many to the fingerprint. Here's how we can employ this format during expansion to transfer a fingerprint uh, into a larger filter. First, we transfer the least significant bit of the fingerprint to become the most significant bit of the slot address for the entry in the new expanded filter. Second, we employ the remaining bits of the fingerprint as the new fingerprint for the entry in the expanded filter. And third, we increment the unary counter to provide the necessary padding for the entry to remain fixed width in the expanded filter. The crucial point is that now, newer entries inserted after the expansion can be set smaller unary edge counters and larger fingerprints. To analyze the false positive rate with this new design, we observed that half the entries were inserted recently, and so their fingerprints are as long as possible. A quarter of the fingerprints were inserted before the last expansion, and so their fingerprints are smaller by one bit. An eighth of the entries were inserted two expansions ago, and so their fingerprints are uh, smaller by, by two bits, etc. We can compute the weighted false positive rate across all fingerprint lengths with respect to their probabilities, and the result is log of n times 2 to the power of minus f. This is much better than the fingerprint sacrifice method, for which the false positive rate is linear rather than logarithmic with respect to the data size. But we can actually achieve an even more scalable false positive rate. The insight is that in many applications, a query to an existing key is usually followed by retrieving this key from storage. If the target entry is older and has a shorter fingerprint, this provides an opportunity to rehash the key extend its fingerprint, and shrink its age counter. We refer to this as a rejuvenation operation. And as long as the workload consists of true positive queries targeting older entries, this allows us to stabilize the false positive rate. Nevertheless, even if the workload is such that older entries are never queried, we can still stabilize the false positive rate by slightly extending the fingerprint size as a function of the data size. In particular, suppose we let fingerprints grow at a rate of log log of n by slightly increasing the slot width after some expansions. This causes the overall false positive rate to converge to a constant as the probability of false positives over newer entries with extended fingerprints is much lower. Okay, let's finish off with some evaluation figures. We start off with a fingerprint sacrifice method for which the false positive rate increases linearly as the data size grows and which can only expand a finite number of times before the fingerprints run out of bits. In contrast, InfiniFilter offers a logarithmic false positive rate by default and allows expanding indefinitely. If we set InfiniFilter's fingerprints to slightly grow, we can fully stabilize the false positive rate at a cost of an additional log log of n bits per entry. Or we can also stabilize the false positive rate by rejuvenating older entries during queries at no additional memory cost. 
Let's now measure query cost. The fingerprint sacrifice method is fast, but does not allow infinite expansion. The geometric chaining method supports infinite expansion by allocating more filters, but its query cost increases rapidly as a new filter has to be added during each expansion, and all filters must be searched during a query. In contrast, InfiniFilter offers lower query costs and infinite expansion at the same time. The paper covers various other design aspects, like how to chain multiple infinite filters together when the oldest entries run out of bits to support infinite expansion. How to perform deletes correctly, despite having variable length fingerprints in the filter, by targeting the entry with the longest matching hash. And how to integrate infinite filter with quotient filter, which is especially suitable for infinite filter because it performs collision resolution without relying on the fingerprints of entries. In conclusion, we introduced a new infinitely expandable filter. It never requires rereading the original data. It provides a stable and decent false positive rate versus memory trade-off that meets theoretical lower bounds. And it provides fast queries, insertions, and deletes. The source code is available in the following GitHub repository. Thanks very much.